Hi everyone, this is Dr. Rahul Hawari from the channel Ask Applied Scientific Knowledge. Today I am going to talk about rheology. This is an important topic uh, from the physical pharmacy. So you will be using this knowledge as a pre-formulation or formulation scientist in the drug product development. This topic has been divided into series of various small videos. So this is the first video. I welcome you in this first video where we will be talking about the basic components of rheology. So as you can see in this picture, we have two beakers, beaker one and beaker two. And these two beakers, they are holding different types of liquids. In beaker one, we have water, which has been stained in blue color. And in another beaker, we do have honey. As you can see here, both liquids, they are flowing, but they are not flowing in the same fashion. In case of water, it's really free flowing, while in case of honey, it is not flowing as freely as water. And of course, that's in our day to day life example, where honey is not flowing according to our mood. And you will understand that after your marriage. So let's talk about basic definitions of rheology. Let me stop this video. The rheology, it is the study of material deformation, including flow. So that's the first thing. And it is a science of uh, flow. Then second thing is viscosity. It has been denoted with letter eta. And it is an expression of resistance of fluid to flow. The greater the viscosity, greater the resistance to the flow. Now there is another one, flowability, an expression of ability to flow and its inverse of viscosity. And majority of our books, they do have these two definitions and they are like just exchanging the words or reversing the words. And these two definitions, they are not really giving you a sense why in the world you are getting viscosity or liquids are having the viscosity. And that's what we are going to hit in this topic. Before that, let's go through another set of definitions, stress and strain. In common English, we are using these terms one for another. For example, oh, there is a lot of stress because of work. Oh, this work is giving me a lot of strain. So you are exchanging these two terminologies one for another. And you are thinking that they do have same meaning. That's not correct. In English, you can use that, but in physics and in rheology, they, these two words, they do have their proper meaning. So let's decode their meanings. What is a stress? Stress is force per unit area. And if you remember your high school physics, there is another term for force per unit area, and that is called as pressure. That is called as pressure. So let's find out more about stress. Let's take an example. We Here we have two beams, beam A and beam B. And let's assume that this is the cross-sectional area of, of beam A and this is the cross-sectional area of beam B. So what is the difference between beam A and beam B? Well, beam B has more cross-sectional area, isn't it, as compared to beam A. Now let's assume that I have applied certain force. F and this is the A1 is the cross sectional area of beam A and I applied same force F and A2 is the cross sectional area of beam B. Let's take some examples. Okay, that will ease our life. So let's assume that we are applying force 10 Newton on both beams and A1 that is the cross sectional area of beam A is let's assume that 10 millimeter square okay and a2 let's assume that it is almost double isn't it 20 millimeter square so what will happen what will be the stress on beam a and beam b well let's find out for beam a it is 10 newton divided by 10 millimeter square so it will be 1 newton millimeter square which is again 1 mega pascal isn't it how about beam b 10 newton 
what is the cross sectional area 20 millimeter square so it will be 0 0.5 megapascal so when we are applying same forces on these two beams beam a is experiencing more stress as compared to beam b isn't it why because of the cross sectional area so stress on beam A is large stress and therefore it is a weak material and then beam B it experiences small stress and therefore it is a strong material so we, we have seen some people in our day to day life isn't it one is weak uh, person and another one is strong person and that strong person they can he can lift let's say 50 pounds of weight very easily as compared to weak person so that's exactly what is happening here. Let me take this out now because I need some space. Here because other animations will pop up here. Now let's talk about strain. Strain is the deformation divided by original shape. Here we are thinking about or we are evaluating what is the change in length as compared to its original length when we are applying same force so let's say again let's go with this beam having certain height and we are applying force and let's say L0 is the height of the beam and we have two beams again A and B both have same length but when we, we are applying certain force the length of B1 is delta L0 change in length and in this case delta L2 we are applying again same force the length is not changing that much isn't it it's just like half of it so let's take uh, numbers again let's assume that L0 is uh, 10 centimeter and L1 delta L1 is I would say well, four centimeters just to make our life easy and delta L2 is two centimeters so what will be the strain of beam A so A will be like 10 centimeters divided by oh sorry four let me rub it out so A will be 4 centimeters divided by 10 centimeters so it will be centimeters centimeters will get cancelled out so strain is 0 0.4 and you can see it is a unitless parameter how about in case of B it is a 2 divided by 10 it will be 0.2 isn't it so this guy or this beam is experiencing less strain as compared to this beam So which one will be the stronger material? Well, beam B will be the stronger material, isn't it? Beam A is experiencing large strain and that will be soft material. And beam B, it is experiencing small strain, so it will be a hard material. Let's take example again, let me rub it out to make some space here. So let's take example from our day to day life sponge and steel which material will be softer well sponge will be softer you will have easy deformation isn't it you can change the length easily and in case of steel if you apply same force on the steel as that of sponge you will barely see any deformation or change in length so steel is very strong material as compared to sponge so both stress and strain you can use to evaluate the differences in the material softness or hardness of the material and when you are thinking about another operation in the pharmaceutical science tableting you need this material soft material as compared to this hard material isn't it so we know now what is a stress what is a strain now let's understand more about normal and shear stress. So let's first talk with the normal stress. So when we are using word normal, 
in compression physics or any physics it is the force applied so this is the plane face of the plane perpendicular to that face 90 degree so here in this case i am applying force 90 degree to the face and that is called as compression stress where are we using this compression st stress well think about the tableting again what we have in tableting here you have this powder bed you are applying force from the top and down and you are compressing that powder isn't it and that force is perpendicular to the plane and that's why it is called as compression stress what you can do again applying the force in perpendicular but instead of compressing you can stretch this material isn't it you can pull this material and that is called as tensile stress and where you are using this material uh, sorry not material but when are you using this tensile stress well you are using that during your gym sessions when you want to build your muscles you are using this uh, rubber uh, wire to stretch and that will help you to build your muscles of course that is for the tableting uh, that is during your bodybuilding isn't it and where in both cases we are applying stress 90 degree to the face so now we talked about normal stress now it's time to talk about the shear stress and to make a meaning of the word shear personally for me i have great difficulty to visualize the shear stress and so let's make an intuition about this shear stress let's assume that we have a firm solid base like let's put in this way i have one table and on that table i put or i have stacked the tons of books so let's assume that number one two three so at least i have four books isn't it and now i have to move <coughs> move these books out of this table if i will apply force in perpendicular direction i am not able to move any book so what will be the another strategy i need to do well i can apply force in parallel direction of this table base so this is in x direction so instead of applying force perpendicularly i can apply force in parallel direction isn't it and then i can able to move these books and that is called as shear stress so let me take out these things because i do have really nice animation there so i am applying forces in this direction so again oh no this time we have one book extra isn't it so five books and then i am applying force in parallel direction of this x and i am getting a deflection isn't it that's what i want now let's assume that and this is you are getting maximum stress in x direction as compared to y and that's why it is always written to x over y similar uh, in this case we have firm base but it is in y direction now and again if i will apply force perpendicular to y direction i'm not getting anything but if i will apply force in parallel direction of that y i can able to move that object very nicely uh, let's take another example let's assume that you are in a school and you are standing nearby bike stand isn't it there are tons of bikes uh, this is a saddle this is a handle isn't it and you have bike tons of bikes in that bike stand and you want to be a little bit naughty okay and what you decided you want to have you want to push these bikes so if you apply force in perpendicular direction you will not get any outcome but if you push one bike in parallel direction what will happen all bikes will collapse on the ground okay that is called as shear stress that is called as shear stress and this shear stress has been used in rheology so in in case of y you will be getting uh, maximum stress in y as compared to x that's why it is a tau y over x and that that shear stress we are using in rheology and why are we using in rheology 
we will have that answer in next couple of videos so i hope you have enjoyed this video and i'll stop here and hopefully see you in the next video thank you